The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And right now, folks, we get the S&P's negative by 13 points. It's Tuesday morning. I had to calibrate my brain. I wasn't even sure if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. There's been so much market action already, folks. We'll jump right into it. NASDAQ 100, negative 57 points right now. You look at the action overnight. S&P's rise to almost 4,400. You sell off to 43.30. You talk about volatility, folks. I mean, two in the morning to where we were basically between about 5 to 7, 8 a.m. this morning. You're talking about 70, 70 S&P points from the highs made last night. And then we bounce more than 30 S&P points up to a price level of 43.65. Right now you're trading at 43.56. If you take the action where we were last night, put a little Fibonacci retracement on where we were, you rise almost right up to the 50% of that move lower. Uh, and as I mentioned, you're talking about a move of about 75 points from the highs last night to the lows. Dow off 117 points right now, 33,726. Bitcoin's up $2,600 on the session. We just had a 45,000 handle on Bitcoin. You're talking about more than $10,000 from where we were just Thursday. Remarkable volatility continues. You talk about volatility, crude. How about a 101 handle? So much for a 90 handle on Friday, a 101.53 handle on crude. You take a look at the daily, quite a relentless charge higher. Not sure that that uh, is going to wane anytime soon. You put this thing on a weekly, man. It's just been a one-way trip from where we were just recently on December 20th. You're talking about highs, and I think I saw it, talking about highs, highest level in like eight years maybe. Yeah, you're talking about again because you just eclipsed the recent high going back to uh, yeah, 2014 probably on crude prices. And it's a critical area when you're coming into $100, man. You fly past $100, 147, 150 is just sitting right out there. And the way things seem to be escalating in Ukraine, unfortunately, not sure how that situation resolves itself in any good way, uh, to put it lightly. Markets, though, doing pretty well when you're down just 10 points in terms of some of the headlines that continue to come out uh, about the geopolitical stuff going on in Ukraine. Now, let's jump to gold. Gold's up 18 bucks this morning, trading at 1919. And how about notes and bonds? I'm going to jump over. Talk about some volatility, man. And pay attention to this bond market because they're talking about it in the den. They're saying maybe the bonds know something. And I would pay attention to it, folks, because, boy, you just had bonds. Now, we're sitting at about 1.78%. You were on your way to 1.7% at 128.20. Okay, we just fell back 20 basis points, and that's after rising. At 2 in the morning, you traded up a full point and 20 ticks. That is quite an exodus into notes and bonds, folks. You got the 30 year right now up a full tick, but you just gave up more, excuse me, a full point, but you gave up more than a point. You traded from 156.12 up 2.5 points from 2 in the morning to 159, but even just taking a look at the 10 year, man, you take a look at this volatility. Now, this is just a raw chart over from CNBC. Uh, let me size this up. It's not even sized, right? One moment. I mean, what to pay attention to, folks, okay? Because this correlates to the yield, okay? Is that we're talking about a yield that was at 2% February 25th. It's barely March 1st, and we just almost hit 1.7%. You just almost lost 30 basis points In the yield in the 10-year, I'm choosing my words wisely here, which is why I'm pausing at moments, um, because that is fear, folks. That is fear. And when you read some of the headlines going on right now in Ukraine, it is a situation that is escalating to full-fledged war. And I don't know how Putin gives up until he takes over that country, which is a sad deal. Um, and that is going to mean some rising escalations in a big way. But you just said 30 basis points in the span of about a week. From 2% down to 1.7, we've bounced now to 1.78%. But boy, I, keeping in mind, okay, as that's happening, okay, we have non-farm payrolls coming up on Friday. It's Tuesday. You get non-farm payrolls March 4th. And then next week in 
seven trading days. Next Thursday, March 10th, we get inflation data, CPI. And then the week after that, we get a Fed meeting, March 16th and 17th. With all of that in line, you have the yield on the 10-year going from 2% to 1.7%. Now, yeah, you've recoiled a bit. Uh, you're back near 1.8%. But boy, now, jumping over to some of the headlines. I mean, have you seen the headline about the 40-mile convoy of Russian vehicles, unfortunately, heading north of Kiev? Um, not good news, folks, and not good news how it persists um, as Putin digs in here and things, you know, I don't have any grand illusions of peace talks, unfortunately, of Putin going well. Uh, and not sure how that plays out, but pay attention to this note and bond market because you see the headlines out there and you match it up with what's happening in that market. And uh, it does not spell good things right now for what could uh, take place in Europe. I mean, how does it end? I don't know how it ends right now, uh, other than very, very bad scenarios that I don't even want to game out in my head, right? But you're seeing some pretty radical moves right now on the 10-year. And that's just going back to what we did from 2 in the morning, right, in terms of the move you had. 125.29, you traded up three full points almost. And that is what happened in terms of going from 2% to 1.7. Listen, I've stayed on this topic for a couple minutes, but pay attention, man. That is some fear in this market in a big way. When we have rates coming at us, okay, and they are coming, folks. We're sitting at 1.7%. We're going to be back to 2% at some point. But the fear right now in this market is that things are going to escalate over there. And that's why you're seeing um, all that buy-in coming in to notes and bonds. Uh, surprised you have not seen the level of sell-off that might correlate to the rapid rise or rapid depletion of yields. Uh, higher prices, lower yields over in that market. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on, because that headline speaks for itself, man. 40 miles. They thought it was about 17 miles, I guess. This is a private company. Uh, Maxar Technologies, uh, additional ground forces, deployments, and ground attack helicopter units seen in, uh, in southern Belarus, less than 20 miles north of the Ukrainian border. Just bad stuff ramping up. Um, and things not going well for Putin. I was talking about it yesterday. You put him in a bad spot, and he is in a bad spot right now. As things continue to ratchet up. Isol Russia's going to be so isolated. They're going to be so isolated, and they have to be because of what they're doing. But trying to game out, <clears throat> it's not a game in any way, but trying to figure out an end game for this is, is becoming increasingly more difficult without lots more bloodshed or what. Um, so I think that's what you're seeing in that note and bond market. It's going to be interesting to see how the market reacts today in light of the ratcheting up, it seems, of everything going on. Um, yeah, I mean, all of these headlines, right? Ukraine heading for more brutal phase of war, more brutal phase. I mean, there were pictures out there, man, of, yeah, this is probably the one um, in Kharkiv, right? Uh, of one of those huge buildings getting hit there in Kharkiv. That's probably the images they're showing right there. Uh, whew, just tough stuff across the board. Yeah, I got plenty of headlines for, for all of that stuff. But we're going to get into it, folks. we got a lot of equities. We're going to talk about Target when we get back from the break. Well, we'll be talking about Mayor Kevin Hinks, actually, when we get back from the break. But we're going to be talking about Target. Uh, Target, accelerated higher. You're up by 27 bucks on their earnings. This morning, we had some other companies to cover. you got Kohl's out with their numbers, up a bit, up to about 56.50. Uh, Domino's Pizza, their CEO, he's going to be stepping away and stepping down, down a bit for Domino's. But we'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Fast Market, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back in three minutes. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 14 points. NASDAQ 100, negative by 63. You're looking at a Dow, negative by 127. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time on Tiger TV, TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market with your host, Kevin Hicks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. You're talking about defined risk. You're talking options. Kevin Hicks, where do we start this morning, man? Good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, there's a lot going on. We, we, we've got earnings, we've got economic data, and we've got geopolitics uh, taking over. So there's something for everyone in this market today, Tommy. But, you know, it seems like overnight the markets weaken, and then they seem to firm up as the U.S. markets open each day. So uh, I don't think what's going on in in Ukraine is anywhere close to being over. A lot of traders thought honestly that it would be over by the end of the weekend. And, but the resiliency of the Ukrainian people has been nothing short of spectacular. It's, it's actually quite um, inspiring to watch. So that being said, the reality of the, of the situation tells us that maybe they just, prolonged the inevitable, not um, stopped it, Tommy. So there's still a bunch of risk out there. There's a lot going on in the market right now. So, you know, these markets and the risk-off sentiment, look at the 10-year yield, 177 on the 10-year. You know, crude oil now over $100. You've got the dollar back up over 97. You've got gold higher. Every risk-off asset is higher. VIX is 31 so those metrics right there, the risk-off assets, and I include the dollar in there as well, and now you can include crude oil, they're all telling us that nothing is finished yet, Tommy. It's a great few minutes, man. I agree with basically all of it, if not most of it. And, and yeah, it's a sad deal over there, man. The courage of the Ukrainian people, the courage of the president over there and the leaders. Um, but, man, you see those those headlines coming over, man, and it's tough to be too optimistic, to put it lightly, which is a sad deal. Um, the 40-mile convoy out today, all this stuff, and Russia doesn't seem to be letting down at all. And I don't know how it ends, man, in, in, in anything resembling good, um, which, and you, you beat me to it, Kevin, the tenure, which is what I was going to come at you yeah. with uh, next. Um, 
How about that move, man? We were just at about 2% yield, Kevin. I got a chart of the 10-year uh, futures up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Friday, I got a print of 125.29. We trade up almost four full points, bringing us back to almost a 1.7% yield. And then you add on to it, right? We get jobs on Friday. We get inflationary data with CPI March 10th. And then we get a Fed meeting coming up after that. Obviously, this has a lot more to do with what's going on, I imagine, Ukraine and Russia. But what's your take on yields almost dropping to 1.7 outside of this with, you know, the jobs and then the inflation and then the Fed? How how I think we get Jerome Powell talking tomorrow with some Fed speak as well and how that plays into things. Wednesday and Thursday, Jerome Powell gives his Humphrey Hawkins uh, te testimony. So, yeah, there's a lot going on here. And I think... I, listen, I think the, the action in the 10-year yield and in the 10-year note future is purely a function of risk-off right now. It's a safe haven. You, you can see it in commodities. You can see it in VIX and uh, gold. It is risk-off right now. Now, could that change throughout the day? Yeah. I mean, the 10-year hit 173 overnight, so it's already higher you know, off its lows. So, Tommy, I think what your viewers should focus on is this. Movement. Play for movement. If you're bullish, bearish, I think this market is going to move, and it's going to move quickly and violently in both directions, frankly. So overnight markets are always going to move. Uh, you, you've got to just keep powder dry, keep moving things in and out, and uh, I don't think volatility is anywhere near uh, gone, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, the overnight, it, 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 these moves, they almost don't look as large because they're all in comparison to moves on the same chart that are even larger somehow. But overnight, you trade down almost 80 points in the S&P, and then you pop more than 40 points in the S&P, and we're within 12 points of where we started last night of the close. Uh, with all of that in mind, Kevin, we do have some earnings going on this week. We got some good ones. What are you guys going to be talking about at Fast Market coming up at noon? Mike Folio is going to do a presentation on Dollar Tree. The discount retailer, as we you know, uh, this time of year on the calendar, Tommy, we start looking a lot at retail, right? We've already had some big ones out. Target out this morning, incredible news out of Target. And here's something else for your viewers to think about. It looks like, it appears, look at the action in Home Depot, look at the action in Target, right, in two different directions. What was the common theme? The guidance. Home Depot beat on earnings beat on revenue, but guided softer, and they hit the stock. Target actually missed on revenue, not by a lot, but they missed, but their guidance was so strong that, that the stock is leaping uh, this morning. So I, I was just on with Oliver Rennick, and uh, I said, we may be coming to a ship where now guidance is the most important part of the earnings release. Not so much earnings per share, not so much revenue, but guidance, how they see the future is now becoming the most important part of any earnings release, Tommy. Yeah, it's remarkable how much uncertainty, man, across the board, right? As we come out of a pandemic, um, we're still dealing with so many inflationary problems. We're deal still dealing with so many of the supply chain issues that there's there's just divergence, man, from good companies to bad companies, management playing a role, your sector playing a role. Um, pretty interesting to see it playing out in Dollar Tree. Uh, you talk about inflation, man, this stock on a run from about 83 bucks to 140 and change. A lot of that having to do with they don't have to charge a dollar anymore, Kevin. They can charge upwards of uh, increases, let's just say. And I think that run began when they said basically nobody cares, as in they're still buying, even if it's above a dollar. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they come out with uh, in terms of what Lake Folio has to say as well. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time and the conversation, man. we got a lot going on, and we'll be watching at 12 noon for Fast Market today. You have a great one, man. You too, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern Time, Fast Market. Kevin Hanks, Tom White, they do an outstanding program, folks, and this is a great time to check it out because you got so much volatility, like Kevin was saying in the market, uh, especially if you're ever into options. Uh, very, very difficult to trade options when you're trading with a VIX of around 12 and chains, et cetera. We're at 31 right now, folks, all right? Might be difficult to be paying premium sometimes on the moves, um, but Target, for instance, you jump over to the Analyze tab, $13.90 move was all they had priced in in either direction, okay? In either direction. That was the move as of the price last night. 
on options. So you were looking at about a $7 cost for an at the money put and call, even in this high volatility premium environment that we're in. Target had a move of about $14 in either direction. Okay, so if you're directionally choosing, you had to pay about seven bucks for an at the money put or the call. And what do we got going on today? We got Target up $27. Uh, so still getting some, some kind of moves, but a great time to check out the program. They'll be talking about uh, Dollar Tree. And yeah, as I said, really interesting, some of these companies as they're able to jack it up. I talked about Chanel recently, right? Jacking up the price of their bags. Uh, and and it's really interesting right now that even on the upper echelon and bottom echelon, okay, if you're at Dollar Tree, uh, it's probably uh, just straight out, right? M poor members of society that don't have as much money. You do have very price conscious shoppers in there sometimes. They're in the medium, but you span it all the way up to Chanel, jacking their prices up, people still paying. Dollar Tree, jacking their prices up, people still playing, paying. That's a problem with bringing inflation down when people are just paying and companies realize it and jack it up. We'll be right back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets catching a little bit of a bid on the open right now. You have the S&Ps just negative by nine points at 43.59. NASDAQ 100 negative by 44. 14,184. You get the Dow negative by 132 and the Russell negative by two points. Crude holding above 101 now, above 101. You talk about some volatility in crude, man. Dollar moves. 
They're happening every half hour to hour now in crude. You move up a dollar from seven till 745. You move down a dollar fifty, almost two dollars till 830. And since then, since 830, folks, we're up a buck fifty in crude. But yeah, you're gonna have some volatility anytime you talk about volatility, folks. Friday to today, ten dollars. So there's some movement. You talk about Thursday. I mean, this, I have to recoil, right? You got $10 moves in crew going on right now in both directions, once, twice, three times in the span of less than a week. That is some volatility, folks. But it's probably deserved because the headlines going on over in Ukraine. I mean, as Kevin said, I hate to even utter the words. It seems like they're almost prolonging it um, because Russia. I mean, just the might that they have, unfortunately, uh, is tough to put up against if Putin is really bringing it all. And it seems like he is, which is what's so worrying over there. Uh, and you're seeing crude pushing new highs on the headlines, as you may expect. OK, let's jump over to the companies with earnings. We kick it off with Target. Strong numbers for Target, man. You're up 13 percent for Target. Jump over to the headlines for Target. We'll scroll up to the top here. I was checking out the article. Uh, Reporting a jump in fourth quarter earnings, saying its results will continue to improve on the top on top of the pandemic related boom. Now, here's where the key was operating profit in the current fiscal year will post a percentage gain in the low single digits. Uh, expectations were that it may decline. Adjusted earnings will expand in the high single digits. Uh, and that also exceeded estimates. Uh, and as Kevin was talking about guidance, 2022 guidance. OK, operational improvements are proving to be sustainable, but we're at cost control. This is what I want to get into. Operating income will amount to at least 8% of the sales this year. That outlook eased worries expressed by analysts because guess what? They were worried about costs coming under pressure, shrinking margins. It's clear that the company has more control over costs than the street gave it credit for. Um, they expect profit to vary from one quarter to the next, generally improve as the year progresses. In the fourth quarter, 319 versus 288. How about comp sales rising almost 9%? The expectation was for 10. It's just amazing how they keep rising these comp sales, even off staggering numbers. I mean, folks, this is off a of comp going back a year ago in 2021, when already things, things were going okay in terms of comp sales for some of these companies. Most of the gain came from an increase in traffic. Average transaction less than rose less than 1%. So just more people coming in, they're basically paying the same amount on average. Uh, yeah, we certainly see the inflationary cost pressure. This is their CFO talking. We have a lot of levers to pull within our business to make sure we're protecting value for our guests. Price is the lever we pull last. Nonetheless, man, they're going to be able to take some money to the bottom line. That's what the market was worried about most. You spike from 200 to 225. Yeah, I was talking about this company yesterday. Uh, the 382 and the 618, folks, you got to take a look at them because they're nice areas. Anytime you get that type of action, hindsight's always 2020. Um, but nonetheless, you've bounced a bit. You're up to 225, still well off the highs of 268 recently in Target. We jump over to Walmart shares. They're up basically 1% as well. You take a look at the 15 minute. Uh, probably on the heels of Target. If they're doing well, Walmart probably picking up some of that same action as well. Walmart up 1% right now. We also had Kohl's out with their numbers. Kohl's up 6.4%. We jump over to the headlines on Kohl's. Better than expected outlook as margins withstand supply chain strain. Uh, upbeat outlook calling for net sales to rise 2 to 3%. Operating margin of 8.6% two years ahead of schedule. That's a, quite an operating margin with everything going on. Uh, two to three percent is what they're looking for net sales to rise. The market was looking for 2.2. Earnings 220 versus 212. Revenue slightly under. Uh, but pay attention to this because this is going to be a common theme. Most of the time, the market would be worried about revenue. You want to be growing your business. And you want to be getting your cost under control. But in the long run, you can be losing a little money if you're growing that business because eventually you can make some margins on your revenue. That's the thought. Well, what happened? No, Kohl's make sure that they made more money than the market was worried about and they took in a little bit less. But nonetheless, net income for the three month period, 299 million or 220 a share compared with 343 a year earlier. But earnings beating estimates and they're going to carry sales growth through. Uh, Active wear business. The world has changed, folks. Active wear is here to stay. Uh, 
They sell Nike. They sell Under Armour. For fiscal 2022, Cole sees earnings per share seven to seven fifty. Market was only looking for six fifty five. The market's very worried right now, folks, about whether supply chain issues, cost pressures are going to eat into profits for some of these companies, and and how they're going to guide going forward related to that, and related to whether they're going to be able to carry the growth that they've seen prior, or whether it's going to completely wane. All right, we get into the flip side of things. Now, check out this, Zoom. Zoom spikes to 112 last night. Uh, very short-lived spike, and just like that, you're flat right now at 132.66. You jump over to the headline for Zoom, disappointing revenue forecast for first quarter and full year. Uh, they do a ton of business, folks, in terms of where their multiples are. I was talking about it yesterday. Probably still pretty attractive, even at these price levels, uh, if you're thinking about a longer term position to at least begin to scale in. All right. And we don't have a zoom on my um, newsletter, folks. I do have a small portion in retirement. Revenue growth has slowed as employees started returning to office. Company eased their purchases of software for remote work. Fiscal year. $4.5 billion, basically, is what they're doing. Analysts were looking for 4.7. There's your miss there. Uh, you get into earnings, a buck twenty-nine versus a dollar oh six. Zoom is such a growth company, though, versus Kohl's. They are more concerned with growth and revenue versus earnings. Revenue increased 21% from the year earlier period. Think about this. Think about where Zoom was in March of 2021, okay? And they're still growing at 21%. Well, the market priced in a lot more growth than that. I get that, okay? Um, they're also going to change how they report some of the analytics within their company, which is always a little bit worrisome to put out the bear case. Uh, they said it had 509 thousand eight hundred customers with over 10 employees all right that's down from 5 12 100 in october but guess what they're going to stop telling you that as of this quarter uh though the figure will still show up in its investor deck through the end of the year what's happened over time is we see this tremendous growth online as a channel it started to kind of overlap there which is why we don't think it's really the appropriate metric to use any longer going forward instead they're going to disclose the number of enterprise customers and the net dollar expansion rate among those clients reflecting how much they're increasing their spending it now has 191,000 enterprise customers, up 35% from a year earlier, and the net dollar expansion rate is 130%. So this, this is not the good case of what they were talking about. So they're gonna stop telling you about companies that are larger, that they're losing numbers for, okay? They're not gonna tell you that they're losing customers that have 10 employees or more anymore. And they're gonna tell you about the statistic though, that's growing 35% a year and net dollar rate is 130. Uh, take it for what it's worth, folks. But Zoom up about a percent, even on those numbers. Might have found a bottom there. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets barely in the red right now. You're looking at an S&P negative by three points, NASDAQ 100 barely red by 20. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we're trading right now. You got Amazon down half a percent, down 15 bucks at 3,056. Facebook shares down about six tenths percent right now, 209. You jump over to Apple, Apple shares up half a percent, 165.93. Google shares this morning basically flat. Uh, let's see how Netflix is trading right now, down about eight tenths percent for Netflix. We jump around to some of the other companies with their numbers. Uh, before we finish out the list, I wanted to talk about AutoZone continuing to rise. AZO is their symbol. 1933, you take a look at the three-year weekly, man. You're coming up right near those highs again. Remarkable, right? This stock last year, 1,200 to 2,100. You pop about 3.7%. Barely a pullback when you look at the run this thing had last year for AutoZone, trading up 3.3% as they beat uh, on earnings and on revenue. They made 22.30 a share versus 17.79, and they took in an extra 200 million. Percentage-wise, that's staggering, man. 3.37 billion versus 3.17. 200 million bucks extra revenue um, and as I said, percentage-wise, that's quite a number. Kroger, let's see if they're holding on to the gains. They were higher pre-market. They are up about 2% for Kroger shares. Not sure I'd keep track of that trend line, folks. I was playing with this yesterday a bit. Uh, I have no position or feelings on Kroger. I've only been in that store once or twice, and I had a horrible experience. So even though the chart might look pretty good, that's a bullish formation, man, in terms of higher prices. You got higher highs and higher lows on that chart without even drawing it, right? Um, but uh, really tough for me to get into that one when I just had a really bad experience in Kroger. Um, but I'm used to Publix, and Publix is all about good experiences, but they charge you for it sometimes. That's for sure as well in Publix. Foot Locker, so they continue to get downgraded here. Goldman becoming the latest Wall Street firm to downgrade uh, Foot Locker after their disappointing results last week. Yeah, as I was saying on Friday, man, there might not be a place for Foot Locker. Um, somebody brought up in the Tiger's Den, uh, Tower Records. Does Tower Records exist anymore? They may. I'm not aware of them. Uh, they used to have a multi-floor presence in the city of Boston. God knows how much that rent cost them. Uh, doesn't exist anymore. If Nike is going to be, again, selling their sneakers more direct to consumer, and if you're going to have big retailers, I mean, how does Foot Locker compete with a company like Target if they sell sneakers that Foot Locker wants to sell? I don't know, but you can see how there's really not a super place for them if malls are going to change dramatically and they're not going to be able to sell in the same degree uh, the big popular sneakers that they used to. Nike. I mean, they were living, dying on Nike. And uh, yeah, I mean, taking a look at this chart, folks, you're below where you were in terms of most of chopping around the pandemic. In terms of you're sitting at 30 bucks, and that's where you chopped around for the better part of 2020. Foot Locker. Workday is trading higher today. They beat, uh, yeah, 78 cents versus 71, and revenue beat as well. There's a longer term chart on them. They're up 4.7%, pulling back from 307. Let's take a look out of curiosity where this thing traded back to on a Fibonacci retracement. 
50% on the dot. Uh, I almost prefer the 382 with the 618, folks. Sometimes it, uh, it's very clear how stocks can turn around at those price levels. Let's see, HP, HPQ, they're a little bit lower. Uh, they beat on earnings, sales topped. Uh, I'm guessing maybe Outlook or cost. HPQ, let's just say how they're trading. Up about 2%, and let's check in on some of the other companies. Zoom, now slightly in the red right now on their numbers, and we'll finish it up to see how Target's trading. Up about 11.3%, giving up a bit of the gains, but still above 222. All right, jumping to Facebook. So Facebook, now called Meta, basically down half a percent. This one was an interesting one. I was over on Bloomberg this morning, and uh, Bloomberg Business Week. So I, maybe this is the March issue. Um, Metaverse finally has a killer app, Poker. That perked my uh, attention up. If you're not familiar, I played plenty of poker in my time, folks. I was playing it mostly online, pretty much almost exclusively online um, for many years as poker rose from the years of 2000. Moneymaker, when did he win the World Series of Poker? Uh, 2000, 2001, something like that. The poker boom started. Um, Timing is everything sometimes, folks, right? I was just coming out of college. I'm 22. You got disposable income. You have freedom. Uh, anyway, I've played a lot of online poker and thankfully, fortunately, done pretty well. So this perked my attention. Uh, and it's interesting. So Decentraland, I'm not familiar with this. Uh, Decentraland, buoyed by casinos where players gamble for a chance at crypto wealth. Always interesting to see how things are going to evolve here. Now, Here's the article they're talking about. It's out this morning. Uh, Business Week Technology. Decentraland is buoyed by casinos where players gamble for a chance at crypto wealth. Now, the interesting part is the legality of where this falls, okay? Because you're playing for digital tokens, okay? Well, you can go play fake poker for digital tokens if you want. But then what if you want to turn those digital tokens into something else? And what if somebody pays you for the right for those digital tokens, which they consider have value? Well, in the metaverse, digital things are going to have value. That's already taken place, right? We've seen the articles um, about virtual real estate getting sold for X amount of dollars, right? What's the difference? What's the difference in being able to then play games for virtual things, which you can then trade for other things. That's how the metaverse is gonna work, and that's what's being happening right now um, in Decentraland. So again, I read about this early this morning at about six in the morning, folks. Uh, one of the busiest metaverses today is Decentraland. Visitors enter the virtual space through a web browser, choose an avatar, and are transported to a vibrant digital hub where they can tour a replica of Sotheby's London Art Gallery, attend a virtual Paris Hilton concert, or visit J.P. Morgan Chase Company Lounge, featuring a portrait of Jamie Dimon himself. As it turns out, though, the place most people visit is the casino. Welcome to the internet, folks. Uh, so I'm trying to fast forward here because I don't have time to read the whole article. It's a great article. Um, but what they talk about is that here's the part. The four poker rooms in Decentraland frequently host about half of the people in its metaverse at any given time. I'm going to have to check this place out. Um, so Decent in Decentraland, the poker parlors known as Ice Poker are run by a company called Decentral Games, which doesn't possess a gambling license in the U.S. and argues it doesn't need one. Gamers aren't directly cashing out chips for money after they play. Um, this is the company's COO. Yet experts say the system exists in a gray area. Well, there's a lot of gray areas that companies have exploited to become very profitable. Uh, any contest or prize predicated on buying in constitutes gambling. Um, but it's, it's, it's a murky area, and I imagine regulators are gonna try and clamp down on this, all right, folks? Um, and I'm not telling you to go over here and gamble because you go over there and somehow put your money into this. Um, doesn't mean you might be getting it back. Decentraland is a fusion for the two most sought after themes in technology, uh, the metaverse and Web3. People buy and sell the app's custom currency, okay, this is the key here, mana. I've heard that before, but I'm not familiar, which has a market value of $4.7 billion. That's why I've probably heard it. Some 600,000 people use the app each month uh, and has captured headlines. They had um, Dead Mouse in there doing a concert, huge electronic DJ. Really interesting to see how this is going to shake out. And I'll finish this conversation up when we get back. Um, but yeah, they talk a little bit about Internet Explorer was, was launched in 1995. 
And over the next couple years, you had 15 casinos ballooning into 200. Online gaming, folks. Uh, online gambling, online poker. I'm going to finish this up. We've got a couple tidbits to finish this up. Uh, online poker, actually in the original Bitcoin source code before it was released. Did not know that. We'll talk about it. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps negative 13 right now, NASDAQ negative 24 right now. So jumping back to this article, a couple things to, to note. Uh, I did not realize the original source code for Bitcoin contained references to a virtual poker game that was never released. Uh, not sure why that happens, but they found out uh, an original source code that Satoshi had floated out before the original release of actual Bitcoin. Um, and it did have something about a poker game in there for some reason it got taken out nobody knows exactly why but nonetheless we persist so the the interesting part about this right is that it talks about here that you can get into these games okay by let me let me get the exact part they talk about here um to play guests may buy or borrow a piece of virtual swag sold by the casino a hat sunglasses shirt cigar that can later be sold for cryptocurrency you see how they're creating the one-off there you're not trading for money you're trading for products that then you choose to trade for crypto um the amazing thing is this is how the yakuza runs casinos in japan folks it's illegal but they loophole it by basically you're in an arcade playing for products that you then go to the back of the casino for and trade that doll that you just won at the at the arcade for straight cash I'm telling you, it's how it happens. So 
to bring it full circle, right? There are already sites that are somehow capitalizing on this type of legality, okay? Now, I'm not telling you to play on these sites, folks. They are not regulated. I would not play on them, okay? Uh, Global Poker, what was interesting was this one's around, and they do the same thing. They've basically said their business model is they're a, a, a promotional free poker site, but sometimes if you want to play, they give away free gold coins if you like, but you can buy gold coins that are worthless, okay? You buy 50,000 gold coins for 10 bucks, but they also give you sweep coins, and sweep coins have real value that then you can promote. You're going to see this play out, folks, and it's remarkable because one of the last things they talked about in this article is they were having trouble figuring out how to get people on to the metaverse, that was a big part of their problem, of saying the main problem with the metaverse now, even at the outset, is the fact that it's empty. That's the Decentral Games founder, so we're trying to populate the metaverse, and basically with this, it seems to have worked so far. I don't know, I'm gonna have to check out Decentraland, and we'll see. Uh, but interesting to see how sometimes momentum can build. Online poker, helping uh, Mana, $4.7 billion. Stay tuned, folks, thanks for joining me. Basil's up next, live programming all day. Have a great Tuesday.